shuttle them back and forth. Okay. Yeah. There's a big truck in there. Go in the shell of that big thing. So, uh, what identification go ahead and do that at that time if they can't then we'll uh, make sure that we can do it at the end so once we're in play that'll be the uh, game plan we'll break down we'll go through the areas and once the quad quadrant's up and we'll find out who we got who's in play by then we should have more people arriving with more tentage and everything like that we'll use the road as our collection point and everything like that so if there's walking wounded so there's the greens and they can be collected here we'll push them to this point and then that way we have the greens here and we can concentrate on the reds yellows whatever they may be questions comments concerns all right as soon as we're in play we'll let you know and helos cannot get to us until at minimum of tomorrow morning so the weather between here and there prohibits Helicopters come play. Cool. So we're standing in there, boys. Go do your triage, come back, and report everything we got in our sectors, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, stick with us. We'll do it in section four. We're missing one section. No. I'm just gonna tag with these guys. We'll do the first two line right away. They're uh. Where they were all green. You see right here. So black tent, you're going to walk towards that black tent and report to the man to stand there in the orange, okay? Jody, how far are you? How are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Yeah. Not having any problems breathing, either one of you? No. How about, uh, white tent, dodgy area, anything like that? Can you tell me what happened? Uh, Fred, yeah, I got a sucky chest wound and a minimal bleeding from the abdomen. So these oh. are the, the collection point of the green casualties, so the, the walking wounded. So semi, like, they will be the lowest priority for evacuation, but we want them collected in one point, so if they don't walk off and get themselves into more danger than what they'd happen to be in right now. So the rest of the guys are evaluating the people who are still in the field, who would be the reds and the yellows who can't move on their own.
So that's what, and that's why we have the grid system set up. Three okay, so I got seven guys. Seven. I okay. have one blue, three red, two green, and a yellow. Come over and sit down. Four. No, just the abdomen and the chest. Okay. One, two, three, yep. And he has no pain in his head. I'll just set this right from the stomach. That's a good thing. We're going to get this area cleaned up, yeah. put our medical in one area, clean up our stuff, make sure it's somewhat tidy, and then uh, that's what we'll do. All right. No, no. If you start getting really cold, let me know so we can start getting it off the ground at the end of okay? You guys, when we can get extracted, right now the, we've been told that the weather is uh, minimum, so the helicopter can't get here until tomorrow. So we're waiting for a field hospital to be airdropped in, and then... We're going to treat until tomorrow when we see a helicopter. That's the plan. Yeah, so what happened here today is we've got a uh, simulated uh, Department of Defense aircraft that was carrying Canadian and American service people uh, actually back home from an exercise. And they've had an extremely unfortunate incident where they've actually just uh, just crashed here just behind us. So what we've got here is actually uh, U.S. Uh, PJs and Canadian Sartex on scene attending to the uh, the injured right now. Yeah, so extremely important that we have, I mean, once we get the, the PJs and the Sartex in, extremely important that we have uh, both U.S. Army and Canadian Army would come in with uh, major air disaster equipment to get these folks out of the environment, keep them warm, keep them stabilized, so we can get some helicopters up here and start flying these folks down south. Our relationship with the Canadians has been phenomenal, and this is also a partnership between the SAR players, the search and rescue players have worked together for, for many years, and it's conducted anywhere from, we conduct a range of search and rescue, anywhere from routine search and rescue through mass rescue operations, to catastrophic incident search and rescue. And this is just one other method where we're able to practice our partnerships and improve them.